guys, Gunner again here from Buff Nerf Repeat and in today's video I'm featuring another under 1000 dust free to play Hearthstone deck. Now again, let me warn you, if you're experienced with Hearthstone then this video is not for you, this is for players that have just installed the game. They don't know what they're doing, they don't know what cards are strong, they don't know what to craft. So if you are one of those people and you want to get into competitive Hearthstone, you want to play, you want to be able to compete at the lower levels, you want to be able to win games, then continue watching. This deck might just be for you. Today we're focusing on the Hunter class. This is an 840 dust deck. Very, very cheap. Again, this deck does not feature or include any rare, epic or legendary cards. You will not find a cheaper deck than this. Let me go through the deck card by card. Candle shot, brilliant hunter card. One of the best you will find for 40 dust. We're running two of these. Now what's important about this card is your hero is immune when attacking, which means that you can attack into a minion with eight health, 12 health, it doesn't matter. You will not take any damage. You combo that with hunter's mark, change a minion's health to one, and you are essentially killing any minion in the game without taking damage. It's a great card. We're running two of them. And of course, Hunter is very aggressive. It's a very aggressive class. And we're playing it in a very aggressive way with this list. So that damage can also go to our opponent's hero. Diamond Mole. This is a great card for Hunter because of the Beast logo at the bottom. This is a Beast card. And Beast cards can be buffed, especially in the Hunter class, to make them do more damage or to give them certain effects. So this is a great one drop. You want to keep this in your starting hand in every situation. Glacial Shard. We're playing just one of these. Now, the reason I like this card in Hunter is because we may find ourselves in a situation late game where we need an extra turn to kill our opponent. But the chances are they're going to kill us. If we've got a Glacial Shard, we can freeze one of their cards, one of their strong minions, maybe their face if they're a, a weapon attack class, and then we get that extra turn we need just to cross the line and to kill them. Hunter's Mark we've spoken about. Wargon Invitrator. The reason I like this card is because it's a stealth card, meaning it can't be targeted. It's almost a guaranteed two damage to the face or a decent trade up if going first. Cracklin Razormore. Now this card is great. Again, it's a beast and it also has a battle cry, Adapt a Friendly Beast. Now, Adapt gives you different options. So when you adapt a beast, for example, if we play Diamore on turn one and follow up with the Cracklin Razormore on turn two, the Diamore is going to get options to improve it. It might have more stats. It might have a poison effect, it might have a shield, it might have a death rattle. Hopefully we'll get to see this in action. This is a very powerful card. Direwolf Alpha. Adjacent minions have plus one attack, so ideally you play this in the middle of your creatures and then both minions get the extra attack. Scavenging Hyena. Whenever a friendly beast dies, gain 2-1. Now this thing can grow out of control uncontrollably. So Comboing it with cards like Unleash the Hounds, if you sacrifice your Hounds into your opponent's minions, this card is going to grow instantly and it can even attack the turn it grows. So if you play it one turn, Unleash the next turn, trade the creatures in, it will grow and then you can attack with a really big and scary Scavenging Hyena. We're playing two of them. Animal Companion is a free card. Summon a Random Beast Companion. It's played in almost all Hunter lists. It's a spell. It's great. It has free outcomes. Hopefully we'll get to see those. Bear Shark can't be targeted by spells or hero powers. I like this card because it's only for we dust. And obviously not being able to be targeted means that more than likely either a weapon kills it and then that person is taking face damage or a minion has to trade into it. Iron Big Owl, we're using it simply for the silence effect. Silence for a taunt. Silence a big scary buffed up minion. It's really helpful. It's also a beast. Jungle Panther is a beast. It's got stealth. Hopefully we get to connect four damage to the face. Kill Command. Deal three damage. If you control a beast, deal five instead. This is a very powerful card. If you think a, a hero in Hearthstone has 30 health, 
If you manage to connect both kill commands with a beast, that's 10 damage, that's one third of their health pool gone in two cards in this deck. Fantastic. Here's Unleash we spoke about earlier. For each enemy minion, summon a 1 1 Hound with charge. So the more minions your opponent plays, obviously that's bad for us, we don't want to fall too far behind. But if we do, and we play these, and we get a lot of minions, hopefully we can buff them up with maybe a, a Dire Wolf Alpha and get the finishing blows in that we need to win the game. Wolf Rider, this is, card's been around forever. It's seen play in lots of decks over the years, and here it is again in our free deck. Charge with a free one, self-explanatory really. Hopefully we get to connect a face. You can also make some good trades with it. You can also clear taunts with it. Flanking Strike, deal free damage, summon a free free wolf. Uh, it's a good removal card and it creates a board presence which is great which is exactly what we want we don't want to remove and not follow it up with anything hound master give a friendly beast plus two plus two and taunt taunt is not really essential here but what we're looking at is the extra two damage and the extra two health it means that not only are we doing more damage to the face but we're giving our minion on board more survivability with the extra health has to be a beast though so don't get confused with that one and Fungal Man, so we saw this in the road deck, we didn't get to play it, but it's strong and it's our highest costed card in this deck. We run a lot of cheaper cards obviously, so hopefully we get to connect, put this down in the middle and buff the two adjacent creatures. Let's take it for a spin, we're going to continue where we left off in the last video. Switch over to the Hunter. Okay, here we are with our cheap hunter, no rares, no epics, no legendaries, and we're up against the paladin first, and we find our diamond, which is a great one drop, probably the best one drop in our deck, we're going to throw these two cards away, although this is a good combo, I mean a good battle cry, and it works really well with the diamond, I don't think this is going to be around on turn 4, and if it is, it will be because we've drawn something else. We've drawn a free drop and another one drop. So we don't really want to keep four drops in our opening hands. We get it anyway, so let's see how it plays out. We're going to start off with the Diamol. Diamol, I should say. And our opponent has coined out this card. Now this is quite interesting. This tells me that his deck is a control paladin. Gain free armor. It also tells me that he's got another two drop. Normally people don't coin out two drops unless they have a two drop to follow up. So this puts us in a bit of a precarious situation. If we play this it just trades for nothing. But I think we have to. Because if we don't... <laughs> Then we're going to fall behind on board, especially if he follows up with another 2-drop, which he should do here. So expect to see the trade into the 2-2, two -two, and there's the other 2-drop that we were talking about. And there's the trade. And we can finish off now with Diamond, no problem, and we're going to play our Animal Companion now. This has three outcomes we'll speak about in a moment. That's... The worst outcome in this scenario. So, we either have this outcome, which is Huffa, which is a charge of 4 2. We have Misha, which is a 4 4 with Taunt. Or we have Leok, which is a 2 4, and it gives minions on our side of the board an extra one attack. Okay, so our opponent here elects to leave the Diamol on board, which is a mistake, and it's a mistake because we have Houndmaster. And we're not going to trade any of these minions off, we're just going to hit him in the face. We're on the face plan now. So when you fall behind with, on board with this deck, what you want to do, you want to try and have a game plan. Now your game plan 
is a way that you can win the game even when you are behind. It may involve top decking certain cards, it may involve luck, but ultimately you want to give yourself an out. Now, we're falling really far behind on this board. The only way that we get saved is with uh, Unleash the Hounds here, it looks like. But our opponent has attacked into two of our minions two turns in a row with his face, so he's on 18 already. So, although we're not in a good position, we're in a position where we can still win. So, because we're on the face plan, we're going to hero power almost every turn from now on. We're going to attack in here to try and remove this bubble. We want to remove this taunt as soon as possible. And Redemption, it's come back to life. There's nothing we can do about that. We couldn't get through to any of these minions. So, unfortunately, he now has another bubble taunt. For duty. Again, our opponent elects to use his face. It's a strange decision. Now we're in a situation where we can kill our opponent over two turns. He's on 12, and we have 10 in hand with a hero power, which makes 12. Now, the situation here is we can't do it until turn 8. Because, mm -hmm. let me explain the situation. If we play the Razor Maul now and use one of our kill commands, that is 5 mana we can't hero power. And what's going to happen is he's going to kill our Razor Maul, and we no longer have the beast effect. So we won't be able to have our... Kill command do five damage, so we have to plan this turn wisely. Now this attack into here is not worth it. The reason is this minion will die, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna attack in here with the weapon. And we're gonna leave this creature up. We're going to take a chance here that he doesn't kill our Razor Maw. I think this is our out. Like I said earlier, we play to our outs. So if he doesn't kill our Razor Maw, we have lethal. If he kills it, we can top deck a low cost beast and still win the game. We can also win the game if he doesn't taunt up by attacking in with our buff with our stealthed minion. For duty. Okay. We drew the extra beast to win this game anyway, so fortunate, but we had lethal regardless. We played to our outs and we won the game. Now, as you can see, we don't have the board here. If this game went on any longer, we are easily being defeated, but we played to our outs. We recognized that we were falling behind and we were able to win. This is what this deck's all about. Let's play another game. Let's also turn the sound down a little bit. Okay, let's go again. So that last game, although we drew, drew, drew the beast, I should say, we were going to win that game anyway. You can attack into the taunt, the 1-1 one, one taunt with your weapon. The 2-1 that's in stealth can go face, putting our opponent to 5. Kill command without a beast, that's 3. Hero power does 2, that's 5. So that was a win either way. We were against mage and we draw no early game. So all of this goes back. We're looking for those 1 drops, we're looking for those 2 drops. We've got a 1, 2, 3 curve here. It's not the best in the world. This card is not good against Mage because Mage can ping it down. So we play our candle shot and we don't attack here. We have no reason to attack. Hello. 
hope you like my invention. Okay, we'll play the Dire Maw. The reason why we play the Dire Wolf, I should say, is because if he doesn't remove it, we get to trigger this adapt effect on this beast. Now, although this doesn't get adjacent minion value, this effect is arguably better. So if we manage to land this on this, it's better than this buffing something later on in the game. We were always going to play a two drop here. So if we didn't draw one, we would have just played this one naked. Now you'll find this a lot at these low ranks. New players just like yourselves who do rather strange things. Now what our opponent did there is he coined out a two drop and the two drop didn't really do anything. He played straight into our weapon, it drew him a card and then his follow up was just a hero power. You don't really want to be coining out two drops unless it's like a doomsayer or something and you don't want to be doing it if you don't have a follow up. It's a complete waste. So here we are, we're actually going to adapt and the reason why we're adapting for two mana is to keep this minion alive. Now this minion would die to the ping next turn if we didn't get this shield, but now we've got this shield, it stays alive. Although we float a mana, it's much more valuable than playing this that essentially just gets pinged down. Although there was an argument here to playing the, the Wolf Rider into uh, with the Dire um, Wolf here because they were both on one health, you couldn't ping them both. But then you're weak to things like arcane missiles and if they both land, you're really far behind in the game. So this option is definitely better at these ranks. Okay, and he looks like he's setting up some kind of, I don't know, maybe arcane missiles here. But we're not missing out on this Wolf Rider val value. We're definitely smashing him in the face for eight here. And we're going to hold back on the Wolfing Infantry, however. So we'll float another mana here. So we've floated two mana so far this game. Okay, the big taunt comes down. Now we could kill command this big taunt and push face, and I actually really like that option. Keeping minions on board is better. And the reason is he has to deal with the minions. Once the kill, once the kill command goes face, the minions are already dead. The, the minions are gone, and he doesn't have to do anything else. If the damage has been done, and that's it. It's over. We attack with the weapon here because I'm anticipating the game will be over next turn. So we may as well get the attack in, just in case he heals, gain some kind of armor, some kind of taunt. He's now dead to another kill command. He's dead to a wolf rider, rider hero power if he somehow freezes. Or, oh, here's the taunt we were talking about. Not only is he taunted, he's also going to gain health from this taunt, which is a pretty strong card. Restore four health to your hero. We, however, drew this lovely thing. And we are going to... In fact, we're going to buff this. I'm not sure it matters, but the Wolf Rider is going to go into that turn. So we're going to buff this guy. The Wolf Rider goes in, as well as our face. And we hit him in the face with the hero power. It's lethal. So another win. We've had cheap decks, so that's four wins now with very, very cheap decks. Okay, I know this is rank 25, but if you're starting the game, you're going to be at rank 25. You're going to be playing against these players who make mistakes and who have decks that are not built optimally. So with this guide, with these deck lists, hopefully you have a little bit of an advantage over them and it's going to give you the knowledge and experience to really learn the game and to progress. So until next time, we'll have another class, another cheap deck. Until next time, goodbye.